Hello everyone, and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today I will be taking a look at LEGO Jurassic World, set number 75932, Jurassic Park Velociraptor Chase. This being the set from the 2018 Fallen Kingdom line that is actually based on the original movie from 1993. And this set includes 360 pieces, 4 minifigures, one Velociraptor dinosaur figure, and it retails for about $40 in the United States, where it is a Walmart exclusive. So without any more further ado, let's begin this review by taking a look at those minifigures. So here we have our figure of Dr. Alan Grant, the main protagonist of the first Jurassic Park movie, and this is a pretty good minifigure. I'm not going to say it's a fantastic one, but for what it's worth, this is a pretty good design for an Alan Grant minifigure. Starting off, his accessory, as he is the only figure in the set to get any accessories officially, is a stud shooter, which is supposed to represent the gun he had, although judging by the fact that there's a transparent blue stud at the front, I'm imagining that LEGO has downgraded it to, like, a taser gun rather than a good old-fashioned bullet gun. Which, I mean, I guess for kids is fine. Um, not, I don't really like the combination of the silver barrel with the brown trigger. I don't know why they couldn't have just gone with the standard dark gray trigger, which definitely would have helped to make this look less dumb. Um, but, I mean, it's still cool to get the silver one, since that's none too common. And, I mean, in general, th there's a good chance that was actually intentional because, I mean, I can definitely understand Logo's prerogative with not wanting to have k little kids playing having playing around with their minifigures having realistic guns. We have enough kids in America playing around with actual guns. We don't need them to have realistic toy ones. But anyway... <laughs> but anyway, so, um... But, it's, so, but the figure itself is pretty good. The hair piece, I think, is probably the best choice. Um, it did take me a bit to warm up to it after spending quite a bit of time invested in 100% completing LEGO Jurassic World, the video game for 360 and a couple other consoles, but I had it on 360, but um, anyway. But I think that overall, this hair color is definitely the most accurate, and the hair piece works pretty well as well. Um, the face print is a pretty good likeness to actor Sam Neill, who of course did portray Dr. Grant in the movie. And, um, I mean, you have a lot of detail in there, like the lines around the eyes, around the mouth, the little line for the chin. Like, if I remove the hair piece, there's even more, like, in, in between the eyes. Like, there's a lot of detail on there, and it really does go to making this look a lot like the actor, which is good. And I think... I think this face print does work good for the character, but my issue with the head is that if we turn it around to the back, there is no alternate face, and there is a reason for this, and that's because he gets a hat, which he did have in the movie, but I would have much preferred if Lego had just left that off and just given him a double-sided face. and. This is something that does happen occasionally with figures, and I just don't like it whenever they do it. And, like, I get it. Like, the, he does wear the hat for a good portion in the beginning of the movie, and you want to have that. But this is based on the ending of the movie. And while at first I guess this was fine, um, we actually know now that we're going to be getting a direct-to-consumer Jurassic Park set based on the original movie... This summer, that has currently not been revealed as of when I'm recording this, but, um, and that set is going to be based on the Visitor Center, most likely, just judging by the minifigure selection and general logic of what they would do for a direct-to-consumer Jurassic Park set, but, um, so I think that if that's the case, th they really should have just gone with just the hairpiece and given him a double-sided face, since for this last scene, you wouldn't want him to be smiling, you would want him to be, like, frowning or scared or angry, like, at least a frown. Like, I mean, like if we're only getting a single face print, they should have given him a frown, not a smile. He's just not happy in this scene. They're all about to be killed by dinosaurs. 
you know, as you do, it is a Jurassic Park movie. But anyway, but I'm moving away from the pretty good, but maybe a bit problematic face print. The torso's pretty good. Um, I mean, there isn't much to say about it, but you have some good shading with all the wrinkles. You have a good design for the little scarf around the neck. Turning him around the back. That looks good. Yeah. And no leg printing, but that's perfectly acceptable. Um, yeah, I mean, so is this a perfect figure? Not really, but it's still a good one, and, I mean, compared to a lot of other likenesses LEGO does for actors, this is a pretty alright figure. Um, just to recap, torso is fantastic, it's nothing wrong with that. Gun, I totally understand, just wish that there had been an alternate face, or at least a more fitting expression for the one we get. Moving on to a figure that actually is just, like, literally perfect. Here we have Dr. Ellie Sattler, and, yeah, I'm not kidding. I cannot point out a single real issue with this figure. I'm starting off with the hairpiece. She has this sort of long hairstyle. Um, this is a piece that's relatively common in this color. Um, it's appeared in a good amount of sets through the past decade or so. In lots of different themes, including, like, City, The Lego Movie, Indiana Jones, etc., but, um, it works well for sort of this later-in-the-game Ellie. Um, I think it's interesting that for the majority of this costume, like the other figures in the set, they didn't go for, like, the end-of-the-movie design when they're all covered in, like, sweat and dirt, which I guess kind of makes sense. But for the hairstyle, they did actually go with that look, which I think is nice. And definitely a lot more interesting than the ponytail she had earlier on. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there isn't much to say about the hairpiece. It just... It works well. It's it's good shape. Um, the face print is fantastic likeness to Laura Dern. To the and I honestly think it's surprising how much better this looks than the Vice Admiral Holdo face they did for her in Lego Star Wars. Considering that like the those sets come out like six months apart from this one, so I don't really know what's up with that. But I mean, it's good on this figure, so I don't know. I don't really mind. But anyway, um, the expression is good with sort of a confident smirk which i think works well for her and then the alternate face is this very frightened one that looks perfect i mean like there isn't much else to say about that it, it's just it's just good they did a good job um the torso much like grant's isn't too complex but it does its job it works well um the skin tone around the neck is printed really well, which I know is an issue on some figures. Um, this figure probably got it well because the pink color is pretty similar to the flesh tone, but I'm glad that there isn't any sort of blending, because even on relatively light colors, it doesn't always come through too well. So that's good. Um, But yeah, you have the undershirt, which definitely has some shading, and I'm guessing that that bit around the neck actually is a bit of sweat, like sort of being staining through the shirt, which is an... I mean, it could be a shadow, but I'm guessing that that's supposed to be sweat. So again, this figure is definitely going for more of an endgame style than the other ones. Endgame just meaning, like, the end of the movie. I'm not talking about the critically acclaimed film Avengers Endgame that is, like, pretty close to beating Avatar for the highest box office of all time. So get on that, people. But anyway... But yeah, torso's good. Not much else to say about that. Um, I do think that the curvature for to sort of represent the slimmer figure is maybe a bit severe. I probably would have gone a bit less... I probably would have done a bit less for that curvature, but I mean, it kind of works with, like, the, the button-up shirt being sort of tied in the middle and tightened around. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I would have gone a bit less severe with that, is all I'm saying. Um, anyway, the back print, though, is... Yeah, the back print for the like the waistline is sort of more what I would have gone with for the front but anyway like the creases are good the design is good and oh yeah she also has double molded legs with printing and like these look really good like you have the belt printing you have pockets you have the little bit of skin showing since those are shorts you have the socks and you have boots and again you even have the sock and skin printed onto the side so like this is just Again, just a fantastic figure. I really can't point out any flaws. Um, I mean, honestly, the only f minor thing that annoys me about this, this figure is that they're using this same face print for Fleur in the new Harry Potter sets, and it doesn't work for her. 
but that doesn't hurt Ellie, it just is annoying because of another figure. And just an interesting tidbit, we've, we know from a leak of the Fleur figure from the Bobaton's Carriage set, which comes in August and has Fleur with a different face, that that face, because the, because the one side has it with like an, an in-awe open mouth, is probably going to be reused for Ellie in the Visitor Center set, which I just think is interesting because we have Ellie's head, which is then reused for Fleur, and then we're getting Fleur's head reused for Ellie, which is, I just think that's interesting. Um, this face does work well for Dr. Sattler, though both of them do, but, but this one works well. The torso's good, legs are fantastic, hairpiece is good. Yeah, it's just a good figure. Now let's move on to another pretty good figure. Yeah. So here we have Lex Murphy, a figure that I'm hoping in the Visitor Center set gets mid-legs, because she should probably have them. I mean, I don't know, I just think that short legs are too short for her. But aside from that, this is a pretty good figure. The hairpiece is a good one, and I doubt it, but I think this might be the first time we're getting it in this sort of caramel color. It's the first time I can think of. I mean, it looks good, pretty accurate to her hairstyle. I like it. The face print is just one that they've used quite a bit recently. It's actually a city face print that they've just redistributed the printing onto a flesh tone head, or, you know, light nougat, um, which I think is interesting. And this is, again, popped up in other places. Um, it appeared in actually another Jurassic World set for... Uh, what's her face? The, the the little girl from the Fallen Kingdom movie. The one with the Ginny Weasley hair? I don't know. I, I didn't watch Fallen Kingdom because, I mean, I heard it was terrible, and I'm, I'm kind of sick of terrible Jurassic Park movies, so I didn't even bother. But anyway, um, but the face was also used for Susan Bones in the Hogwarts Great Hall, but I think it works pretty well here. I mean, it's certainly not a perfect likeness because it wasn't designed for her, but like, it's not terrible. Um, um, I probably, like, I, I mean, like, the eyes are a bit too cutesy, but other than that, like, the, the mouth is good. How about that? I, I think the mouth works fine. And the alternate face definitely works a bit better for me for Lex. Like, again, it's definitely not perfect, but, like, it's better than it could be. How about that? Um... Yeah, just the eyelashes I don't like, but everything else is fine. Um, the torso is really good. It is pretty accurate, pretty detailed. I um, I like the creases on the shirt. I like that those are there. Um, maybe I would have gone with more of a dark purple instead of black, so there's less contrast between just the wrinkles in the main shirt. I don't know, but like the patterns are really good. The sort of designs with like the neck and the like this. I don't know what you call, I, I actually don't know what you call them, the, um, like, the edges where the shirt cuts off and there are no sleeves, like, uh, like this bit that I'm pointing at here. It's hard, it's hard to see what I'm pointing at because my finger is much bigger than the area. This bit, there you, there you go, there. Actually, that's not a bad idea. You know what, no, I'm, I'm gonna use one of these clear stick where is here it is i'm gonna use one of these clear sticks to point at things from now on because it's actually much more effective than a finger okay good new policy but anyway um but yeah so that works back printing if i remove the really good hair pieces pretty similar just some new some more patterns and some colorful colors some of them like the orange blending in more than the blue and the red which really stick out Short legs and sand blue, which are not too common, so those are nice to get. So overall, Lex is a pretty good figure. Like, the hairpiece is good, torso's good, legs are the best they had at the time, and the face is the best that could really be expected from a set with the, with the relatively poor budget that Jurassic World sets get, especially in 2018 with Harry Potter leeching off of their prince budget a bit. Um... So, yeah. Yeah, it's a good figure overall. Our last figure is young Tim Murphy, who is another figure, like Ellie, that I think is about as perfect as you could expect. Starting off with the hairpiece, 
It is just the classic Lego male hairpiece that we've had for 40 years now. Dang, it's, it's been a while. But anyway, it's that hairpiece in nougat, which I think is a new color for it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have never seen that piece in nougat before this set. So that is cool. It's, it's like, it's cool. It's always cool to me when we get such classic pieces in new colors. It, it's wild, in my opinion. And the face print is the same as Lex's, same case, rather, where it's just a city face that they put on a flesh tone, and it's been used on a few different characters. But unlike Lex, I think this works basically perfectly for Timmy. Um, I mean, the freckles work, the eyes work, the mouth works. It's basically like if they made if they made an exclusive face just for Timmy, it would probably look somewhat like this. And again, this face has appeared in other sets, some with Seamus Finnegan in the Hogwarts Swamping Willow. Not actually sure if it's appeared anywhere else, but anyway, so this face is good. But then we have this sad face. Um, I think it would have been good if maybe for Timmy we could have gotten like a just a full-on scared face. With Lex, I actually kind of like that we just get more of the sad face because it kind of works for when she's concentrating on rebooting the computer systems. But with Timmy, I think just a an expression of fear would have been good here, but again, this is just them taking an existing print and putting it on a new color where they can use it on a bunch of different characters, so I think it's perfectly fine. Um, and again, the likeness to the actor is pretty good, so I don't really mind them not going for the full expressiveness. Um, the torso, though, is perfect. Like, it's another, like, all of the figures in the set have phenomenal torsos, and Timmy is no exception. Like, you have the jacket, you have the little neckerchief, you have the striped shirt underneath, it's it's just really well done. The back printing is about as, like, I can't really see any way that could be improved. Like, just some creases, some shaping of the shirt. I mean, like, yeah, like, aside from, again, it would have been nice if he'd gotten a scared face, but other than that, this is a perfect figure, basically. And he's also the last figure in the set. You get four, which is way more than you'd expect from your standard Jurassic World set, especially for $40, like, that's pretty good here. Some, like, in the original Jurassic World sets from 2015, the only set to include four minifigures was the $130 Indominus Rex set. So, like, getting four here is pretty good, especially since they're all exclusive, and while he is the last figure, we do still have one, well, non-mini figure, actually pretty large to look at. And you all know what I'm talking about. That's right, everyone. It's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. Why am I doing this anyway? Yeah, this is the set's included Velociraptor. We only get one. I... Two would have been optimal, that would have been good, but I understand why they didn't go with two, because they were probably struggling with everything that's already in the set to keep it at a $40 price. If they'd included two Raptors, they definitely would have had to mark it up to 50 and I'm glad they didn't. Especially since, again, Visitor Center set will probably get the other, the other two Raptors in that set. We'll definitely get at least one, but probably two, so we'll have all three. But, um... This raptor, I'm perf- I, um, while it would have been nice to have gotten two, I, I'm fine with getting one again, because you're really only go- you're probably not gonna be acting out multiple scenes at the same time with this, you're probably just gonna take one of the scenes you get and just act it out, and each scene included in the set only re well, one of them doesn't even require a raptor, and then the other two only really require one for, like, the area being portrayed, so it makes sense. If you don't know how Lego Raptors work, they're made up of a bunch of specially molded pieces that have been in production since 2012. Um, so basically, you have the main body, then the arms are each attached with a Technic pin, and they can move up and down, and they can grip bar-sized items. The legs can move back and forth, and they're also attached with Technic pins, but like molded in Technic pins, like, I, I mean like this. And then the head is attached with just a separate black Technic pin that can be removed, and then the head itself is pretty good. It can rotate a full 360, and you have a jaw attachment that can open like this, or all the way. Or you can keep it fully closed, of course, but just looking at more of the details on this guy, he's pretty cool. Um, 
The eyes are pretty good. Um, I mean, yeah, they do keep with the standard Jurassic World styling instead of going for something a bit more scary like we saw in the original movie, but I suppose to keep consistency, that's good. Um, I do really prefer how this looks with the open jaws. I scrunch him up because it's difficult using this guy with just one hand. Um, but yeah, um, I like the printing on top with the sort of patterning, and as well as on the body and down the legs. Spottiness is nice. I like how they have the molded, sort of the big pointy toe claw, which is good. I mean, like, and also I just like that you have the hands that can grip things, since they actually put that to use in the set, where we have that, where we have sort of the iconic scene of the raptor opening the door. Or at least, you know, you get a door that the raptor can open. So, like, yeah. I mean, there isn't much else to say with this guy. It's a Lego Velociraptor. With coloration closer to the original movie. I'm, I'm not going to say it's perfect. Like, this is definitely still more vibrant than in the original. Um, I'm not entirely sure what color combo you would go with to make a Velociraptor that's like the original. Um, probably maybe olive green and dark gray? I mean, like, I don't know, like, that might be a bit too boring, but I really feel so for the original movie, like, even having this much contrast doesn't really work. Like, it looks good, it's just not accurate. But I suppose that considering how, again, in the original movie, the Velociraptors were kind of blandish looking, I suppose that giving a more colorful design that's still less colorful than what we get for Jurassic World was definitely the best course of action. I've talked for way too long about this thing. I mean, I know oh, that the, they're kind of a big deal in the Jurassic line, but I think this is like the one set where you're getting it for something besides the big dinosaur. And, um, well, aside from the minifigures, that thing is the build itself. So, like, let's get to that, eh? So here we have the build of the set which is comprised of three different rooms from the interior of the Jurassic Park Visitor Center. Specifically, we have the main control room taking center stage. On the left, we have the embryo cold storage room, and on the right, we have the iconic kitchen scene. And first off, I'm, I really like how they did this. It's not too common that LEGO does sets that are exclusively interior-based, but I like when they do because it allows us to get an interior that is perfectly accurate without it being mostly dependent for how it looks by what it looks like on the outside, which normally, you know, compacts the space it takes place in, changes the color of the wall, stuff like that. So just doing it as a full interior shot is a really good idea. And another really good idea, in my opinion, is that the three rooms are all detachable, as they are all connected just using some Technic pins. So what we can do is... We can just, this is a bit, let me just, there we go. We can just pull them apart and I can look at the three sections separately, which is both good for play, for if you, know, you know, just want to have the scenes lined up. Display, again, if you want to display all the scenes separately, and for the sake of this review, and it means that I can take a better look at each model without having to always have the frame fully open so we can see the whole thing. And well, we do get one side build, which is a little stepladder that is used at the end of this scene when the raptors break in through the window, I do believe, is what happens. It's been a bit since I've seen the movie. But anyway, so you could have them climb up the ladder into the non-existent duct system, but I think that's perfectly fine that we don't get it. I mean, you could just imagine, I mean, if you want to play it like that, you could just have them climb up to the top of the wall of the set. But, I mean, it's pretty simple. You have hinges at the top, so you can just lay it all out, and you have this droid arm, but you can just flatten it out. Um, if you remove the droid arm, you can flatten it out completely, and obviously this just allows you to clip it together to sort of set the angle of the ladder. So this is sort of normal. Yeah, you could clip a figure onto it and have them climb up. Cool stuff. Now, moving on to our main interior area. Here we have the... Jurassic Park Control Center, which has some cool stuff in it. Um, starting on the left, we can see Dennis Nedry's desk, which, well, one of the computers has the uh-uh-uh virus, which, um, 
interestingly, is not entirely accurate to the movie because, as you can see here, it has him in his Hawaiian shirt when the actual GIF had him in a sort of white suit that was probably a reference to something that I don't know. But anyway, um, I imagine LEGO just went with the Hawaiian shirt since it's more recognizable, though. The other computer is of the Unix system that Lex uses when she has to reboot the systems. And I like the design of the desk, not only just because you have the one computer set off to this at an angle, but you do get a printed keyboard, and my favorite part is that piece used for the mouse. That's a smart usage, and you do get a chair on a swivel, so you can have Lex in there and have Lex working on the computer. Um, if I had one thing I don't like about this section is that you can see the corner of the desk and the turntable the seat is on actually go over the triangular boundary of the set. Like, you have this sort of triangular cutout, and they go over that. I don't mind too much, but I think it would have been better looking overall if they could have just found a way to keep that contained. Oh, well, just a minor thing, really. But over here, we have a Technic lever, which goes into our main play feature for the set, really, where you can boot up the door locks. So basically, I currently have the door fully closed, but what you can do is you can pull out on this piece, and then the raptor can break through the door, because obviously if you can't tell what happens, you have this Technic hole on the door, and then when this piece comes in, it'll just lock it. And the door is nicely detailed, like you have a window and you have a handle, and while I'm not going to do it right here because it'll take a minute, um, the raptor can actually again grasp the handle, which is nice, and... The raptor can't really fit through the door, though, without a good bit of finagling, so I guess you could call that an issue, but I don't mind too much. I mean, like, again, if you really want to get it in there, you can, but overall, you're probably just going to want to have it sort of trying to bust through, and then, of course, you boot up the door locks. But there is another way the raptors can get in, as I mentioned earlier, where on the right, you have... First off, just a very nicely detailed wall section, like you do get a single one of the textured brick bricks here, but on the other side, you get several with a green light, a window with a Jurassic Park sticker on it, this very nice map of Isla Nublar, which it's just a fantastic sticker, and just some stuff up here. But, um, so the other feature is, of course, the window can just be... Let me just grab the set to stabilize it. You can take your raptor and bust the window in to get through. And again, it's going to take a bit of finagling to get him through, or, well, her through, rather. All the raptors are girls. But anyway, so you can do it. Um, I actually did it wrong, I guess, because it's supposed to come out like this and just have this come out. So I'm here. Let's see if I can do it this time. And now it's breaking up. Everything is breaking, of course. Um, So, um... This feature is a bit finicky for some reason now. It, I've had this set for, for months, and I've never had these issues before, but there we go, and you can just press it out. There we go. That's how it's supposed to work. It just The window just pops out. Simple feature. Cool stuff. Just pretend that the last 30 seconds didn't happen, because, again, that has never happened before I filmed this review. Just my luck. But anyway... So you do get a couple of other things off to the side, where you have these nice stairs. I like the carpet color with the dark red. We have a box containing a silver wrench, which is none too common. Black is definitely the main color, so I always like getting it in silver. It also just looks better to me. We get the umbrella piece, which is also not too common. It's only been around since 2017, and it hasn't appeared in that many sets. And we also just get a standard walkie-talkie, which isn't anything special, but it's good to get. Then also we have the phones with a printed dial pad. And if the phone is just here, there is nothing to represent like a cord or anything, but that's perfectly fine in my opinion. And that's really all there is with this main section of the build. I mean, overall there isn't a ton to it, but it's just a fun, quaint little playset. And obviously, if you wanted to, you could definitely set up some figures in here. Like, obviously, we have Lex over at the computer. And you could also sort of set up Dr. Grant. Just... Well, if you unlock the door, you could sort of have him holding the door closed while the raptor tries to break in. Something like that. Maybe have the door a bit more open so the raptor's face isn't being smushed. But anyway, yeah. Cool stuff. We do get two other areas, though. So moving this off to the side. 
Our next section is the iconic kitchen scene from the first Jurassic Park movie. So, I guess actually we'll start off from this side, since this is the angle you'll be seeing it from if you have the set turned around to the front when it's all connected. So you have this main countertop with a nice printed chocolate bar piece here. I always like getting this print. It's a very cute one with a little golden ribbon as I drop it, because of course I do. On the end, you have a pot and a silver pan with a sausage in it, which is nice. Um, it would have been nice if the sausage was held down by, you know, something, since it is, like, it's very common to fall off. So I'm just going to leave that off for the rest of this section. But anyway, so in here, we underneath the counter, you just have some storage space with a single unprinted yellow can down there. Here we have a plate of jello with a bunch of studs on it, which is from the movie. Here we have another pot. You have some cabinet space that is normally empty, but I think it's a good place to store all of the spare stud shooter ammo you get for Dr. Grant. Or, also, you could spill that out, and you could use this as a hiding space for one of the kids. I'll take Timmy, and you could just sort of set them in there and have them sort of crawling through. You cannot fit them in all the way, but you can get pretty close. And you can definitely, you know, fit them in and have them sort of sticking out. Um, let's see if I can sort of pose them a bit more. You get get something like this. That That looks pretty nice. Yeah, and then obviously he's hiding from the Velociraptor, which kind of fits in there, I guess, sort of on the edge. Probably works better if you just have it outside of the actual playset, snooping around. Um, yeah. There is, unfortunately, no version of the iconic scene where the raptor opens the kitchen door, but at least we do get the door to the control room, so you get one door that the raptor can open, at least. Yeah. And then over here, we just have clipped onto the side a butcher's cleaver, and a spoon, that epic play feature. You can give the spoon Timmy, and you can take a stud of jello, and you can put it on the spoon, and he's eating jello. What a champion. That's really all there is to say about this section. It's definitely the simplest. Um, I'm not going to say it's my least favorite. Um, Actually, yeah, I probably will, um, which is unfortunate. Um, I do hope that in the Direct-to-Consumer Visitor Center set, they do expand on the kitchen a bit more. But if this is all we get for it, it's certainly not a bad location, just leaves a tiny bit to be desired, in my opinion. But anyway, moving on to our final section, which unfortunately really doesn't get any minifigures to go with it. Here we have the Embryo Cold Storage Room, which would have been a great place to include Dennis Nedry. Although, I mean, really, all of the figures we get in the set are, are designed for just that main scene in the control room, and Timmy and Lex could also work for the kitchen scene, so I get why they didn't include Nedry, since he is... He is long dead by that point. Oh, by the way, spoilers for a quarter-century-old movie. But anyway, um... This is a very nice design, though. Even if we don't have a figure to go with it, yet, we are getting a Nedry in the the Visitor Center direct-to-consumer set. Probably said that already. Anyway, but yeah, so, but for the moment, this is still pretty good. You can see that you have a couple of stickers, one stating that this is embryo cold storage restricted, and the other one just being a simple danger sign. Here we have... Dennis Nedry's Barbasol can, which I like the red stamp piece. No printing on it, but that makes sense. Here we have the different embryos in their little containers, which I think looks fine for the little vials. I mean, they're not perfect, but they work well enough. Here we just have what I would presume is some sort of cooling unit here at the back. I like the design of the railing. And then these stairs are nice because unlike what we saw with the couple hangovers in the visitor center, they actually sloped off the edge of the stairs, so there's no hangovers. That's just a nice thing to keep with the cutoff, and it does look really good in my opinion, and obviously you could pose a figure walking up those stairs, and connecting this back together with the main set, you can see that those stairs actually lead up 
to the door that we have here into the control center and that is not accurate i don't believe but it's still good to have the door lead somewhere in my opinion since obviously if you want to have the figures just escape through the door they have an area to go through and also this could just be used for if when you get a dentist figure if you do where you could just have him go out of his little workplace through the door and steal some embryos and then also the kitchen just attaches on here so you can sort of see that this odd tile is less odd now and i mean yeah just putting everything together it looks pretty good here i'll, I'll put timmy more like here and then dr sattler can just have already climbed the ladder she's she's on the roof okay yeah that, that, that's how we're doing this also i'm gonna zoom out a bit so we can actually get the whole set in view raptor Okay, yeah, that's everything included with the set as it goes for builds, but we still have the box, instruction manual, and extra pieces to go over, so let's take a look at those, shall we? The box set is a pretty nice front design, with all the information on the left. We have the sort of steel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, just the logo just says Jurassic World though, but we have the Fallen Kingdom set designs on the top and bottom, although in the top right, very nice, instead of having the Jurassic World design with Owen and Blue, we just have a Jurassic Park gate with a classic raptor. Good touch there, and actually this classic raptor looks a lot more like the ones in the movie than the one in the actual set, so now that I think of it, olive green and nougat probably would have made for a more accurate color combo. Probably should have thought of that earlier just by looking at the box. I'm dumb. But anyway, you can see at the bottom we have the Velociraptor behind bars and all four figures included. And the set image just shows um, three of our four figures in the main control room trying to avoid death by dino. And then Timmy's, I guess, crying over a sausage over in the kitchen. The embryo room exists. Okay. Back of the box, you can see another play display with the raptor breaking through the window the wrong way, so I guess you could also have it break through the control room into the kitchen, I guess. And you have Lex hiding in the cupboard, and then we have Grant running into the control, um, the embryo room, I guess, so he can shoot the embryos with his stud gun or something, I don't know. And then at the bottom you can see some play features, including the epic jello play feature, the raptor headbutting the cupboard where you can hide a figure the door can lock interestingly they don't show off the feature with the window breaking in the bottom but anyway then you have something telling you to collect them all so you can build your own hybrid dino and yeah i think i'll pass on that anyway on the top we have our four figures and our dino with alan grant making the actual size reference at the side we just have another image of the set the same image of the set as the front with some fire on the other side we just have some generic stuff and on the bottom we just have legal info okay the set does include two instruction manuals it didn't need to include two it sh probably should have just had one but it has two this first one comprises everything you build in the first bag 50 pages of building, and then an advertisement for the Ninjago Spinjitsu Masters sets from 2018 for some reason. If you want a Spinjitsu set, don't get these. Get the 2019 ones from Legacy. Those are the best ones. And then at the back, we have a Lego Life ad with Owen and his main girl, I guess, Blue. Yeah, okay. Second manual comprises bags two and three. It is 72 pages of building. Then we get our parts list, which is actually kind of long, three pages, four, no, four pages. That's quite a long parts list for such a small set. Then we have an advertisement for the Lego Mountain Police stuff for some reason. We have our hybrid dino thing, and you can see some absolute atrocities right there. We have an advertisement for some of the other sets, including the uh, worse Pteranodon set than the one in 2015. We have a terrible helicopter. We have an overpriced gyrosphere enclosure with a bad truck. We have the, we have the uh, thirty dollars set that I actually kind of like but don't have, and then we have the mansion, which is kind of dumb. And then at the back, you can win. 
I've never won, but I, I, I suppose you can win. Okay, just one more thing to take a look at. In addition to the five spare trans light blue studs, we get officially, as spares for the stud shooter, we get actually quite a fair amount of extra pieces in the set, including a, as I drop it, a sixth spare transparent light blue stud. I have no idea where that went, guess I'll find it later. But I mean, in terms of really cool pieces, we get a spare of the spoon piece, which isn't too common. I mean, it's not super rare, like, it did come in two different figures from the Ninjago Movie CMF, but, I mean, who bought the Ninjago Movie CMF? That was the worst CMF line that there was. But anyway, so for other cool parts, you get a Sausig, you get an Ultra Agents pistol in light gray, you get a sort of faucet nozzle, fire hydrant topper piece, you get a battle droid arm in black, you get a half round tile, you get a, as I drop it as well, no luck for me today. But you get a brown stud shooter trigger, which is none too common. You get a red stamp piece and just some other cool stuff as well, but just some studs, plates, cheese slopes, tiles, a Technic um, bushing piece and yeah, okay. Now that all that's done, let's move on to the final thoughts portion of the review. So, overall, what is my opinion on LEGO Jurassic World Park whatever? Is at number 75932, the Jurassic Park Velociraptor Chase? Eh, it's pretty cool, not gonna lie. I mean, it is definitely, in my opinion, the best Jurassic theme set they've done overall from any movie. And I think it's kind of funny that really this was the first Jurassic Park movie, but it was actually the last one to receive a set based on it, because in 2000 we got the Lego Steven Spielberg Movie Maker set, which was based on The Lost World. In 2001 we got a couple sets for Jurassic Park 3, and then obviously in 2015 and 2018 we got a whole line of sets based on each of the Jurassic World movies, and this was the very first set based on the original film. And for the sake of nostalgia, obviously a lot of people who love that old movie are going to want this set. For the four classic characters who are all done fantastically well, especially Ellie and Timmy. Um, and you have a lot of fun details here from the movie, like the computer screens, the little poster, the jello, lots of fun stuff here. But it's also a good playset for kids. You know, Lego's main target audience or whatever. Because, like, you have some fun play features. You have a fun dinosaur, I suppose. You have a lot of space to play with your figures. I mean, this is just overall a really fantastic set. I mean, for 40 bucks, I mean, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be when I bought it. Like, when I got this set, I was thinking, eh, I mean, it might surprise me. It might be bigger than I'm expecting, and uh, yeah, it was a lot bigger than I was expecting. This is actually a really, like, large set for $40, and I know that that's really because they had a lot of, they had a lot of chances to expand on floor space and detail, because, like, we have a, a single right angle wall that doesn't even encapsulate the whole design, like, you still have the kitchen sticking out over here, and, like, again, neither of these sections on the sides even have any walls to them, so they could really go all out with not just having space, but also having lots of good detail in those spaces, while still not having too much detail that it jacks up the price insane amounts by having stupid amounts of greebling, you know, like in Lego Star Wars sets. So, yeah, I mean, overall, and, I mean, the Velociraptor, like, it doesn't even up the price that much. Like, if the set didn't come with the dinosaur and it was just a standard set, 360 pieces for $40 is still a perfectly acceptable price, in my opinion. And again, you get a lot of good stuff here. A lot of size, good amount of play features, awesome figures. Yeah. Now, I can't say I would 100% recommend you get the set now, because there is a Jurassic Park direct-to-consumer set coming, and that's probably going to be better than this, but... I mean, if you don't have money to buy a $200 plus set, I think this is a perfectly fine set from the movie. 
I mean, again, the figures are great. Would have liked if Dr. Granite had a second face, but other than that, they're all good. The dino is really good. The stickers are really good. The build is really good. I'm just talking in circles, so I'm just going to say, the set's good. And if you see it for, for a price that you think is fair, I would definitely buy it. I think the full price is fair, but some might not. I think the set's good. It's a really good set. And thank you all so much for watching my video, and I hope to see you all in the next one that I put out, hopefully very soon. So, thank you all for watching, and good night, everyone.